Hey everyone, I'm Nate. And I'm Abby. And we are the RC Sailors. In this video, we're reviewing the Flyzone Air Core Spitfire. I'll start by saying the Spitfire comes packaged very well. It comes in a really great box that you could easily reuse for travel or for storage. It has a handle. It does, yeah. <laughs> The Spitfire plane body was really easy to put together. I've also got a video to show you how to do that. Now the next step in any vehicle is binding it to your transmitter, at least this one, because it is power core ready, so I had to bind it to my transmitter. I use a Tactic 6 channel transmitter, just like my shirt says, I, I love uh, the Tactic. They spin for him. <laughs> Every experience I've had with this transmitter has been awesome. I really like it and it works extremely well on this um, air core power core system with the Spitfire. Right, so if you're thinking about getting the air core systems, we definitely recommend this Tactic 6 channel radio. Absolutely. Uh, we'll do a full review on this to come in the future. Now, if you don't have a Tactic, the power core system does work on the AnyLink, and uh, so you've got more options. I think I'll start by talking about the things that I really like about the plane. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is simply how it looks, and it looks awesome if you're a World War II plane fan, and I am. It's to scale, and it's four channel. Uh, the ailerons work very well. Now this plane, because it was my first air core, power core vehicle, I had to bind it to the transmitter. I was surprised though, that as soon as I turned my transmitter on and I made a new model channel for my transmitter, I plugged the battery in to the vehicle and it instantly bound to it. I didn't have to do any binding process. So that was the simplest vehicle I've ever bound to my transmitter. So I really appreciated that. Not only is this a tactic and any link ready vehicle, but it has the power core system itself, which will also save you tons of money. The fact that you can take out the power core and use in another vehicle has to be mentioned because... That's a genius idea. It is. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Whoever made up that idea, you get a thumbs up from the RC sailors. Huge. It's, I, I really appreciate it. It's going to save me money. It's going to save our viewers a ton of money. Another positive thing about the Air Core Spitfire and the Power Core system are the Fly Zone LiPo batteries that go with it. These are 250 milliamp batteries, 20C, 7.4 volt. And look how tiny they are! They're so good! I love it! <laughs> These run around six to eight dollars depending on where you buy them at. And so we recommend getting lots of them. <laughs> One battery is about 10 minutes, is that what you would say? I've been getting about 10 minutes of flight, mm -hmm. but I haven't been pushing it to the limit. I've only noticed the battery getting a bit weaker, the plane not climbing quite as quickly towards the end, so I land it with a lot of juice left. Right. I highly recommend getting more. The charge time is quick, and they fly longer than I expected them to fly. The performance of the plane is very important, and I have always been worried about planes so small. I was really nervous on my first flight. My first flight was also insanely windy out. This plane handles wind way better than I expected. Yeah, we headed up to the Benton County, Ohio airport and flew this thing one evening with Nate's family in very, very gusty wind, but we had a great time. We got to meet some pilots. We got to see a new pilot land. It was awesome. So the plane performs better than expected and, and really well, to be honest, especially for the price, the size, and, and it's a scale plane. I've been able to do loops. I've been able to do barrel rolls. I haven't tried any inverted flight because it does tend to lose altitude rather quickly when it's on its side or when I'm doing the barrel roll. And I'm, I'm afraid that an inverted flight it may crash. Now, we were flying and have only flown in very gusty winds since I've gotten this plane. It's early spring right now, at the time of recording this, and uh, but, it, but it's been able to stay in the air. I've probably got about 10 flights in now with this plane, and uh, each time it's been very windy. Unfortunately, it performs so well, it's a little above my head. <laughs> 
I haven't even got to, uh, I don't know, even make it go a little bit <laughs> in the air. I haven't been brave enough to touch it yet. Um, so if you are a beginner like me, um, definitely recommend not this. Uh, I think this is an intermediate at best uh, level of playing. So that's a good point, Abby, that really is. I've heard comments of people having the issue of the magnets disconnecting mid-flight and it crashing, but I've had no issues of those disconnecting. I, I don't see how they could. That's not to say they couldn't, though. While I'm flying the plane with my tactic transmitter, and that may have something to do with it, it seems very responsive. Um, I don't feel like it's got a sluggish delay, and I feel like when I roll the plane uh, with my right stick, it rolls. And when I pull back on the elevator, it climbs. It does what I want it to when I want it to. So that's really good. I don't think you'd have an issue with the range on this plane because of its size. If it's out of sight, then it doesn't matter if it's out of range or not because it's out of sight. So the range on the transmitter and the receiver are uh, more than enough. I've flown in two locations now at this plane, one paved runway and one grassy runway. This is a very small plane, so taking off in grass, I don't see that, I don't see that ever happening with this plane. But the runway takeoff with the asphalt, uh, it worked really well. I, I just gave it juice and in probably 15 feet or less, it was in the air, into the wind. So it takes off from the runway very nicely. Mm -hmm. My first landing on the runway with this plane was a fail because um, actually every landing seems to be a fail in this An plane. Epic fail. It's really nose heavy and the wheels don't roll very well so they catch and put the nose in the ground. Now, this prop is designed to be a breakaway prop, but my first landing, it broke, but it didn't break away. It broke in the wrong place. I had to get a spare prop. Now, since then, every landing I've had because I've landed in the grass since that time, the prop has broken away properly. Mm -hmm. So it's done its job, but I think, I think I must have had a faulty first prop because it just snapped where it wasn't supposed to snap. Regardless though, we have not been able, well, sorry, not we, Nathan has not been able to technically successfully land this plane once because the wheels just aren't, aren't made for landing. She's right. I don't know. Uh, it's meant to land in grass. Uh, that's really the... Mm -hmm. and, and because of that, they took the initiative to make sure this prop is a breakaway prop. It snaps off pretty easily. as you, I just pulled it right off there because it's supposed to. And it snaps back on pretty easily. And now I'm ready to fly again. It's better than breaking a prop permanently and having to replace it. So that's a good design on their part. The only other very small nuisance about this plane is the, the wheel guards. It came with wheel guards on it. In my other videos, you probably saw the wheel guards or, um, uh, I, I don't know, it's part of the landing gear. Wheel guards, part of the landing gear, just Potato, to- Potato, potato. <laughs> Close enough. The cosmetics over the wheels uh, they, they snapped off on that first landing on the asphalt. It wasn't that rough of a landing, but they were just lightly glued on there. And I really don't think they were designed to stay on unless you were never going to, to land the plane, really. Overall, do we like this plane? Do we love this plane? Would we recommend it for anyone to buy? Is it worth your money? Oh my gosh, yeah. Yes! <laughs> This plane is an amazing bang for your buck from the get-go. And you're going to save even more money for every consecutive plane you buy after that. So each body you buy after the Spitfire, you're, going, you're just going to be saving money in the long run. I want Abby to eventually be able to fly this. One day. And she will. Um, it's a quick little guy. And it's very responsive. It's very scale. It's four channels. I highly recommend it. I really do. It only has a few little cons, and I mentioned those. Um, but really, that's not anything worth keeping anyone from buying this plane. We want to thank Hobbyco very much for sponsoring this episode of the RC Sailors. We especially want to thank all of you for watching, because without you, uh, we just wouldn't be the RC Sailors. And then 
then life would be sad. Who would we be? This Nate and Abby? That's boring. The owners of Popeye. <laughs> Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, love us, and we'll see you in the next video. If you guys thought this video was worth your time or you enjoyed it a bit, then be sure to stop by our channel and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Okay, you want to rev it up once and see if the blade flies off? <laughs>